Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How are you? Must welcome everyone watching us live on all our social platforms, on Facebook, on YouTube. God bless you and God favor you. Uh, we love you in this place. My name is Titi Eagles. It's a good thing to share the word of God together. I am blessed to have you as part of what God is doing in this place. We are Eagles Dominion House International here in the heart of Nairobi in Sunbeam Shopping Complex that is opposite Equity Bank and along Fangana Street. You, there's a number down on your screen, by the way. You can call that number and conduct us. And uh, we shall pray together. We shall, you know, encourage each other by the grace of God. Um, I've been speaking about wisdom and obedience in preservation. And I'm trusting God that we are going to finish today. Wisdom and obedience in preservation. Wisdom and obedience in preservation. And I want you to open from the book of First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 15. As you are opening, I want to say, I believe that you are um, subscribing to the YouTube channel. So that every time we are going live, you can be notified on YouTube. Um, follow us on TT Eagles also. Or Pastor TT. Um, and all shall be well. Wisdom and obedience in preservation. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy and your presence in our midst as we hear your word. We pray that you have your way. We pray that you speak to us. We pray that you take over in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, it's a blessing to be in the house of God. It's a blessing to be in the house of God. It's a blessing to be. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 17. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 17. Um, wisdom and obedience in preservation. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 17. So Samuel said, When you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? I'll repeat again. So Samuel said, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord. Saul had issues with obedience. Saul, King Saul, the first king of Israel, he had issues with obedience. And therefore Samuel is telling him, when God sends you on this mission, why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? God sends King Saul on a mission. King Saul is the first king that Samuel anoints to be the first king of Israel. And Bible says that God sends him on a mission to go and kill, wipe out the Amalekites. And when he was sent to kill everyone plus animals and everything else, Bible says that he did not kill the king he also chose the fat cows, the fat livestock. He said, we are going to do sacrifice to God. That was his reason, that we are going to have a sacrifice to God. Uh, you know, he looked, the people chose. There was a choosing of the fatlings. And their plan was to come and sacrifice to God. And even the king, King Saul did not kill King Haggai. And verse 22 says, So Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. In other words, what Samuel is telling King Saul is that, Do you think that God has delight in burnt offerings? and sacrifices more than obedience come on 
Many people think that I will give a sacrifice to God and all will be well. But someone is telling Saul that God does not have more delight in sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings, more than obedience. He says, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. In other words, burnt sacrifices, burnt offerings and sacrifices are not superior to obedience in the sight of God. What is superior in the eyes of the Lord is obedience. And he continues to say, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. So, I've been teaching about wisdom and obedience in preservation. So, what um, Prophet Samuel is teaching here and is teaching Saul is that to obey is better than to sacrifice. To obey the voice of God, to obey God's instructions is better than sacrificing a thousand bulls. And to heed than the fat of rams. When you heed to the voice of God, when you become obedient, he says, that is better than the fat of rams. So Saul thinks, um, I'm going to sacrifice to God and God is going to accept my offering and my, my sacrifice and all is going to be well. But Samuel tells him, it's not like that in the kingdom. In the eyes of God, it's not about the sacrifice. It's not about the offerings. It is about obedience, heeding to the voice of God. Verse 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. I said here and I'll repeat again. Disobedience leads to rebellion. When God checks disobedience in a man, he terms you as rebellious. We can say in short that rebellion is disobedience to God. When someone, and you know the reason why God is calling it rebellion is because in 1 Samuel chapter 13, well, we shall read later, Samuel also had disobeyed God. He had walked in disobedience. So now, it's no longer disobedience but rebellion. He's saying, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You need to hear this. When Saul is disobedient to God, God calls him a rebellious man. And he says, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. The way God detects witchcraft, witchcraft is in the same level with rebellion. Meaning, disobedience to God is as rebellion is as witchcraft they're in the same category so when you are disobedient to god if we call you a witch we are not mistaken <laughs> rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness you know there are people that are stubborn when you become disobedient Look at, look at what is the names that come out of disobedience. Number one is rebellion. Number two is witchcraft. Number three is stubbornness. So God, I mean, opposed, I mean, Prophet Samuel is telling Saul that stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And he says, because you have rejected the, Lord, the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Ah, the preservation of Saul was for him to be king and that the crown of kingship shall never leave his house and lineage. Mm. God had preserved him for kingship. It was never meant to leave his house. But you know what? Disobedience shifts the crown from him to another man. Hmm. It's in the preservation 
where God teaches wisdom and obedience. It's in preservation where God teaches wisdom and obedience. But it is very possible to be in preservation and come out unwise. Come out foolish and disobedient like Saul. Can you imagine what disqualified him from kingship? Some fat cows. Isn't that all foolishness? Small, small things disqualify this man from kingship. Why? It's very possible to be preserved by God for something, but you come out foolish and disobedient. Not every person in the preservation comes out wise. Only a few who come out wise. Why do I say coming out wise? When you master obedience. Not every person in the preservation comes out wise. Only a few who master obedience. Now it's in the obedience that you receive wisdom. It's in the obedience that you receive wisdom. Therefore, I say it and I'll repeat again that obedience is key. The reason why King Saul, God is fighting King Saul and rejecting him is disobedience. 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 The guy has not mastered obedience. The guy cannot just obey God. God cannot just be giving him instructions and then he obeys. He, he has to be disobedient. Obedience is key. The preservation process is a nice place. But obedience is key. You have to master obedience. Now watch this. You will always have the option of obeying God or disobeying God. The choice will be entirely yours. Saul had the option of obeying God or disobeying God. But he chose to disobey God. And God calls it rebellion. And he classifies rebellion to witchcraft. He also goes ahead and calls it stubbornness. Have you met stubborn people? Do this. They do what they want. Do this. They do what they want. They are stubborn. That's a sign of stubbornness. Put this glass there. They put it there. And they do it again and again. Stubbornness. They have a problem with obedience. They can't obey. <laughs> there are people that have proven stubborn before the eyes of God. And I pray that you will never be found in such class of sons and daughters. God has very stubborn sons and daughters. They are there. Look at some, look at what they are fighting with God. Just cows, fat cows. Ah! Why well, there are not fat cows in Israel? What's your problem? Saul. Stubbornness. It's a rebellious man. It's a disobedient man. He cannot master obedience. Every time God sends him on a mission, God must quarrel. <laughs> Every time God will tell you to do something, God will come making noise. Why did you do this? Why did you not do this like this, like this? Why did you choose to do it your own style? Let me say this. Doing in your own style and not the style of God is a sign of stubbornness. It is a sign of disobedience. It is a sign of rebellion. Every time God will tell you to do something, he gives you the way to do it and how to do it. But when he chooses to do it your own way, 
it is disobedient because Saul did what he was taught to do but he, don't, he did it his own way oh come on he did it his own way listen obeying his wisdom <laughs> obeying God his wisdom the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom what is the fear of the Lord when you fear the Lord you will obey him can I repeat what I said if you fear the Lord you will obey him if he says stay here I'm coming only those that fear the Lord will not leave. But those that don't fear the Lord, they will say, he has taken too long. Let me go. When he comes, let him flash me. <laughs> ah, God, God to come and find you are not in your workstation. And he told you, wait for me here. And you left. He said, God is merciful. Hmm. Okay. By the way, he is merciful. <laughs> but disobedience when he when he sees disobedience in you you will not like it obeying is wisdom and disobeying is foolishness disobeying is foolishness so every time you disobey God just know that oh I'm a fool I need to yeah. every time you're walking in disobedience just know that you're a fool what you are doing might seem glorious and uh, you know sparkling and you know wonderful and awesome but just know one thing that you are a foolish man you are a foolish woman obedience and wisdom go together and it's in preservation one loves them obedience and wisdom they go hand in hand they go together you can't separate them and you learn them in preservation. In the process of preservation, that's why you learn obedience and you learn wisdom. When you are not wise, you miss what God had purposed or prepared for you. When you are not wise, you miss. So, is it possible to miss? Yes. In Matthew 25, and I began this teaching with that, uh, that scripture. It is the story of the ten virgins. Matthew 25. The ten virgins, God, or when the, Bible, the writer of the book of Matthew is writing that passage, he says, and five foolish took their lamps and with no extra oil with him. In other words, and there was five wise that took lamps with extra oil. In other words, that the wise chose to obey. The foolish chose to disobey. You will always have an option of obeying or disobeying. So when you are not wise, you will miss the foolish were not wise the five virgins that were foolish they were not wise and by the time the groom came they were not around they had got to look for oil they went checked for oil they came back by the time they came back the groom had entered and the place was shut and they were knocking open for us it was too late that's not your portion Open your mouth, tell the Lord, that's not my portion. I will obey. I must obey. I must become obedient. I will be obedient from today. Wisdom is my portion. Make that prayer. Okay. God preserves many. God preserves many. But not everyone is obedient. The preservation, God will preserve many. But not everyone walks in obedience. God had preserved ten virgins. But only five 
were obedient. The other five were not obedient. It's a choice you have to make. My goodness. In matters of obedience, you have to be intentional. I repeat again. You have to be intentional. What you are doing, that thing that you are doing, are you walking in God's obedience? Or are you in disobedience? Whatever it is that you do, are you walking in obedience? Because God preserves many. He will put them together, preserve many. But you know what? A few come out. Can I say this? There will always be that other group that chooses disobedience. And they will always miss on what God had prepared for them. So people miss. Mm -hmm. God is a promise keeper. True, that's number one. But God is not a promise keeper to the disobedient. If you walk in disobedience, you will never know God as a promise keeper. My heart goes out to this other team, to everyone that chooses to disobey God. Look at Saul. He has been anointed. He is now king. He is sent on a mission. But he chooses to do it his own style. And God is like, I'm done. Samuel, I'm done with this guy. If there is something that pisses God off, is when you're stubborn. You think God doesn't have feelings? He has feelings. I'm speaking this even not shouting because I want you to understand not everyone gets it. Not everyone becomes obedient. Some people are very stubborn. And God keeps on working on that stubbornness and disobedience in the place of preservation but it's a choice you have to make. It's a choice you have to make. You have to be very intentional when it comes to obedience to God. The Spirit of God does not operate with a man or a woman that is disobedient. That is why when David was anointed, the Spirit of God left Saul and went to David. And because there is no void and vacuum in the realm of the Spirit, there is no fence sitting. Bible says, an evil spirit came upon Saul. When the spirit of God leaves you because of disobedience, because it does not operate with disobedient people. Believe you me what I'm saying. Somebody saying, we are of grace. My friend, keep saying it. I come to you with humility. You don't frustrate the grace of God. You don't take the grace of God for granted. You don't frustrate the grace of God by saying we are under the dispensation of grace. I want to read from the book, uh, First Samuel a few chapters behind before 17. First Samuel 13. And as you open First Samuel 13, let me say the following. Let me underscore the following. God had preserved King Saul for kingship. The crown was not meant to leave his house. The preservation of Saul was kingship. The crown to stay there. But because he chose to be disobedient, he lost it. Saul had the option of obeying God, but he chose not to. Please choose to obey God. 13, chapter 13, verse 10. 
of first Samuel chapter 13 verse 10 are you there now it happened as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering that Samuel came and Saul went on out to meet him that he might greet him and Samuel said what have you done Saul said when I saw that the people was scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash then I said the Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal and I have not made supplication to the Lord therefore I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering verse 13 and Samuel said to Saul you have done foolishly did you see that when the guy disobeys you have done foolishly you have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God so when you don't keep the commandment of the Lord your God you are termed as foolish and not wise the five foolish virgins good which he commanded you for now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever so this guy his preservation God had preserved him that he will be king and the crown would never leave his house forever today we will not be calling Jesus the son of David we will be calling him Jesus the son of Saul let me repeat what I said again today it will not be Jesus the son of David it will be Jesus the son of Saul but that title he lost it why because he decided or he chose not to be obedient but now your kingdom shall not continue the Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart and the Lord has commanded him to be commander of, our, of his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you in this passage Saul fails in obedience Prophet Samuel had told him, be in Gilgal, be there, wait for me for seven days. I will come and do the sacrifice and now you can go for battle. Because this was the tradition then. Israel will never go to battle without the prophet coming to sacrifice to God and then they have the blessing of God to go and fight. And now, Look at this, the scenario. Seven days in Gilgal with his army. And then he sees the Philistines coming. They are ready for battle. And Samuel has not yet come to sacrifice to God. When the soldiers, when the army of Saul saw the enemies coming, they were afraid. And they began to scatter. They left him there. You know, people are very logical. People are very logical. People will be saying, uh, if God has not done this, then what he said maybe has changed his mind. Hallelujah. Philistines are coming. And Saul and his army is afraid for their life. And Saul says, uh, I think Samuel is not coming again. So let's do this. Let's sacrifice. Give me the... <laughs> so he was given the sacrifice. He did sacrifice. When he finished sacrificing, Samuel comes in. And then he asks him, what is this that you have done? The worst place to be. The worst place to be is when God will come and ask you child what is this that you have done Samuel asked Saul what have you done the man is disobedient and someone tells him <laughs> you have done foolishly you have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God which he commanded you for now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever the preservation of Saul 
was that for him to be king forever like David but as a result of disobedience that's why I said and I repeat again that disobedience will cost you disobedience will cost you bow your head before the Lord and tell the spirit of God I need your help as I finish pray to the Holy Ghost tell him I need you I need you Holy Spirit I need you more than ever before I need you tell him I need you and I want to see you tell him I need you Lord tell the Spirit of God help me that I will not be disobedient You know, this was the second year when Saul is rejected by God as king of Israel. But he was king for 40 years. Meaning, Saul walked with God for only two years. And for 38 years, he was on his own. He was king, but on his own. The spirit of God was not in him. A tormenting spirit was tormenting him for that eight years. Why? Disobedience. Disobedience will invite tormenting spirits. Disobedience will invite tormenting spirits. And you will be tormented. Saul was tormented for 38 years. And to the day he died. That's why I said disobedience will cost you. It's not a good place to find yourself in. Disobedience. I want to pray with you. That in preservation, you will not come out foolish and unwise. But you will come out wise and obedient to God. That's my cry. God preserves many. But not everyone makes it. God preserves many. But only a few. Master obedience. Obedience. When you become obedient. The Bible calls you wise. I stretch my hand towards you. Wherever you are. And I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. That you will not walk in disobedience. You will be obedient to God. That whatever he tells you. You will do it. It's not a simple matter. It's not a light subject. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Help me. Help me. That I will not end up like Saul. But I will be like David. The Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. What is that heart? An obedient man. David obeyed God. Even in small things. Oh, David obeyed God. But Saul chose not to obey God. Choose to obey God. Choose to obey. I say choose to obey. Choose to be wise. Choose to obey. May you not end up like Saul. May you not end up like the five foolish virgins. That is not your portion. May you not end up like the foolish Samuel asked Saul you have done foolishly what is this that you have done I declare to you foolishness is not your portion foolishness is not your portion I say foolishness is not your portion who is here I say foolishness is not your portion 
You will be wise. You are wise. You will not miss on what God had prepared for you. I say you will not miss on what God had prepared for you. You are the preserved one. 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 And you are making it in the name of Jesus. You are making it. You will not miss. The worst part in life is to miss on what God had prepared for you. The worst nightmare on earth is to miss on what God had preserved and prepared for you. The worst nightmare. The worst nightmare. There was a tormenting spirit unto Saul all the rest of his life. From the day God rejected him, from the day he decided to walk in disobedience, there was a tormenting spirit. He lived a tormented life. He lived a life of no peace. At some point, he has to go and inquire from a witch, a woman that is a witch. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You will not miss on what God prepared for you. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. No one will miss. You will not miss. For you are the preserved one. What God prepared for you, you are not going to miss. Because you are not going to be disobedient to God. You are not going to be disobedient to God. But you will be obedient to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want to pray with somebody that is not born again. Wherever you are, whether you backslid, whether you give up on God, whether you are not sure, this is your moment. Pray after me, say, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. Your name now is in the book of life. Please look for a Bible believing church around you, wherever you are. If you, where they are preaching Christ. If you happen to be in Nairobi and St. Barons, you can join this fellowship. We are Eagles Dominion House International. Here in the heart of Nairobi, in Sandum Shopping Complex, opposite Equity Bank and along Fangana Street. If you check down on your screen, there's a number there. You can call that number. You can WhatsApp me. You can message me. You can talk to me. We'll pray together. If there are inquiries, I'll be there to attend to you. God bless you. God favor you. I love you. Remember that disobedience will cost you. Bless you.